Column D contains a field called start date, which tells us the specific date on which each match was played. So it looks like this game was played on 18 December 1989, this match was played on 1st March 1990, and so on. It seems to be sorted in chronological order. This is one of the formats that Excel can take in for any, any entry in any cell. Now, given that it takes in a lot of date formats, there are a lot of functions that can be used to manipulate dates and perform many calculations or operations on dates. Let's start with a quick function called today, which is what I like, which doesn't have anything to do with column D, but it's a useful function to have in many situations. Excel has a functionality called today, which does not take any arguments. So I'm going to say is equal to today and open and close the parentheses. And if I press enter, it's going to give me today's date. Now, of course, I have the freedom to change the format that this date in. So I can go here. So once I, once I click on this cell, I can go here and say short date or long date. So right now it's a short date format. I can also convert it into a long date format. What I can also do is go to more number formats. And under date, you can see there's many types of formats. You can have this, this one, different ways in which dates can be depicted. Let's take it back to the short date. Excel can also perform operations on various states. So let's say I want to know the difference between two consecutive matches that that Sachin Tendulkar played. So what I can then say is I want to know the difference between this state and this state. So I'm subtracting one from the other. It says 73. So there were 73 days between this match and this match. What if I drag this formula down? It then gives me the date. As you can see, the cell reference changed. In this case, it was D3 minus D2. And in this case, it's D4 minus D3 because I dragged the formula down. So each cell reference moved down by one row. So now this is telling me the difference between 6 March 1990 and 1st March 1990, which is five days. Another quick trick is if I double click on this box in the column, Excel will drag the formula all the way down to the data set. So I can either select and drag it here with one click or I can just double click and Excel will fill it up all the way down to the bottom of the data set. Looks like a few big gaps here between his one day international matches. The next function that I'd like to look at is the if function. So let me quickly clean this up here. So now let's say that I want to have an entry in column F for each game. But the entry in column F is, is something that depends on how many runs Sachin Tendulkar scored. So it's conditioned on the entry in column E. So for example, let's say I want column F to reflect whether or not Sachin Tendulkar scored at least 50 runs in a particular match. So if the entry in column E is greater than or equal to 50, I want column F to say yes. If not, I want him to say no. So let me call this scored a half century. So I'm going to use the if condition here. So let's quickly start the formula with an equal to sign. And then I'm going to say if. As you can see here, the description says, if checks whether the condition is met and returns one value if true and another value if false. So let's open the brackets here. The first argument is a logical test. So what is my logical test here? The logical test I'd like to use is whether or not the entry in column E is at least 50 runs. So for this particular for this particular entry, I'm going to say I want E2 to be at least 50, so greater than or equal to 50. And if it's true, value if true is going to be the value in column F if this condition is true. I want it to say yes. And if not, if it's false, I want it to say no. Let's close this. It says no. So let me drag this down further. It says no, 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 which means he hasn't scored a half century here, but he has here. So let's drag this formula a little further down. And we can see it says yes, because he scored 53 against Sri Lanka in this match. So now let me drag this all the way down to the bottom of the data set. You can now see that based on column F, I now know exactly which matches he scored at least 50 runs in. That's how I can use an if condition. The next function I'd like to look at is called VLOOKUP. Let's quickly look at the description. It's a pretty long one. So it says, looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table 
and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. By default, the table must be sorted in an ascending order. So what does this mean? Let's apply it to our data set here. If you didn't have this data set in front of you, let's say if it was in the background, and I said, how many runs did Sachin Tendulkar score in ODI number 685? What this function will do is use that as sort of a, a lookup value or a primary key, and then go and find the corresponding value of the runs scored from this data set. So let's quickly give it some entry. So I'm going to say, what is the lookup value, right? So let's, let's use a cell reference for the lookup value. So let me say, let's copy, say this value, and let's paste it here. Right, so it says ODI number 687. So now, let's say I wanted to look up this value, which is H7. I'm using a cell reference here. And my table array is going to be this entire table. So I'm going to select this table, and I'm going to select it all the way down to the bottom of the table. And what is the column index number? So based on this lookup value, which is ODI number 687 in this case, I want to know how many runs scored. So what this function will do is scroll through this data set up to ODI 687, then return any value I'd like in this in this row. Because I want the runs scored, I want the first, second, third, fourth, the fifth value in this row. So I'm going to say five. And there's two ways to look up. You can either give ask for an approximate match or an exact match. And I'd like an exact match. So I'm going to say false. So it says four. So as we can see here, what this function did was looked up ODI 687 in this column, or went all the way here, and then gave me, or returned, the function returns the fifth value in this row, which is 4, which is the run scored. Right. So what if I change this to, say, ODI 593, which is the first match? Right. So let, let me change this here. We see it gives us 0, because we know it scored a duck. What if I want to know when he scored a half century? So this is ODI 661, for example. I'm going to say enter, and the value changes automatically to 53. So VLOOKUPs can be used across very large data sets as well. And it's very useful for us to sift through a large data set to pull up specific values based on some lookup keys. Let's now look at some other key modules in Excel. So let's first clean this up. So I'm going to say clear these contents. The first module I'd like to look at is, is about a filter. So a filter can be found under the data tab here in a little module called filter. Now using filters on a data set is a great way to narrow down a subset of the data set based on a specific condition, which can be applied to either a bunch of variables or a select variable. Once the filter is applied, the user can then play around with the subset and either modify the existing filter to change it or remove the filter altogether to get back to viewing the entire data set. Let's quickly see how this done, how this is done. So let's say I have this data set now, which spreads from column A to column F. So now that I select this, this data set and I say apply a filter. So as you can see against the header for the data set, there's a little drop down menu that appears. If I click on the drop down menu, it's going to show me every unique value that can be found in that particular column. For example, here it shows me every single ground, right? So what I can then do is start narrowing down this data set and look at only a subset. So let's say I want to know all the games that were played by Sachin Tendulkar in Cape Town. So I only select Cape Town. So first I have to deselect all, and then I only select Cape Town, and I say OK. So it only shows me a subset of this data set for games that he played in Cape Town. It looks like he's played there only three times in 92, in 2003, and in 2006. And he hasn't seemed to have done very well. No half centuries, as we know from column F. What I can then do is click on this again, and say select all, and say OK, which will then show me the rest of the data set. What if I wanted to look only at a specific, well, let me drop down the start date. What if I only wanted to look at games he played in 2003? It's a random number. Now you can see uh, there's only a subset showing me all the games where the start date falls within the 2003 range. What I can now do is either remove this filter or complicate it a little further by adding another filter. So what if I only wanted to see games in 2003 played against only against New Zealand? I say, OK. Now you can see that this drop-down menu icon looks a little different for start date and opposition. That's because filters have been applied. 
and I can now only see games played against New Zealand in 2003. Seems to have scored 100, which satisfies our column F. Let's now remove this filter. There's two ways to do that. Either I can go back and say select all, which I'll have to do for both this drop down as well as this one, or I can just remove the filter altogether. The next module I'd like to look at is called Remove Duplicates. And once again, it can be found under the Data tab. This module helps the users to remove duplicate entries from a given range of cells, based on certain criteria, of course, and arrive at a data set where every entry is unique. So for uh, let's look at a quick description. It says, delete duplicate rows from a sheet. You can pick which column should be checked for duplicate information. So for example, if I want to know how many unique opposition countries has Sachin Tendulkar played against? So what I'm going to do is select all the entries in column B and paste them here. The reason I'm doing this now for the sake of our example is because once I apply the remove duplicates function, only the unique values will remain, which means if I apply it on the original data set, it will delete entries from the data set to show me the unique entries, which is why one has to be a little careful. So now I can select column H and say remove duplicates. And there's a checkbox here that says my data has headers. I can remove it or keep it back. In this case, I do have a header which says opposition. Now I say OK. So it says 416 duplicate values found and removed and 15 unique values remain. What this means is that out of th all the entries in this data set, it looks like Sachin Tendulkar has played one day international cricket against 15 unique opposition countries, the list of which I have here. There are a lot of things I can then do with this list and a lot of analytics techniques which use this as a dimension to slice and dice the data in different ways. Once again, please note that this functionality will delete the data in the data set. So it's a good idea to always have a backup of the data before using modules such as delete duplicates. The next function I'd like to look at is called text to columns. Now, When copying data from other data sources and pasting it in Excel or maybe importing it to Excel, Excel might sometimes paste all the data into one column, when in fact the user might expect the data to be pasted as a table across multiple columns and rows. This data set we see here is neatly spread uh, from columns A through F. But sometimes if I'd imported it from a text file or let's say a CSV file, Excel might mistakenly paste all of this data in one column. The text to columns module is very useful to parse such data splitting data in one column and spreading it out across multiple columns. Let's look up the official definition by hovering the mouse over the option. It says text to columns split a single column of text into multiple columns. For example, you can separate a column full of, of full names into separate first and last name columns. You can choose how to split the data up, either a fixed width or split at each comma, period or other character. Let's quickly try this out. Let's say I want to take column A and I want to extract only the match numbers from it, or only the uh, match ID numbers. So let me take this and make a copy in column J, and let's scroll right for a minute. I can now apply the text to columns functionality on column J. So let me select column J and say text to columns. Now, because I want only the number, I can safely say it's delimited by the hash symbol, or I can even use a fixed width. And let me show you both ways. If I say delimited and say next, it asked me what the delimiter was, which is basically saying, what is splitting the data up in the host column or in the source column? So I'm going to say other and say hash. What this means is for every entry in this column, Excel uses the hash to split the data into two separate columns, as can be seen here. If I remove the hash, I can see that preview shows me ODI number 593. But if I say split the data up at every hash, it splits it into two columns, ODI and 593. If I say finish, you see the data set neatly gets split up. Let's quickly undo what we just did and now try it using the fixed width option. So I'm going to say choose the file type that best describes the data, fixed width. And what it means is that the fields are aligned in columns with spaces between each field. These two indicators tell Excel where to split the data. So I'm going to say split it here at ODI and split another time just before the number. If I say finish, I say you see this time, of course, the header has gotten split too, but now you can see ODI, the hash, and the specific match number. The original data in the source column could either be delimited by commas or tabs or any other special characters, 
or might even have our desired output columns at fixed widths from each other. It gives us the option to pass the data using each of these. The next function I'd like to look at is called the pivot table. Pivot tables are interactive tables and can be created based on an existing data set. It automatically organizes the data and summarizes it along multiple dimensions, which can then be selected by the user. It can be used to understand the data, summarize and aggregate based on specific fields and make comparisons and also help us uncover trends. So let's say I wanted to use a pivot table and understand how Sachin Tendulkar has performed against specific opposition teams. How many runs has he scored against each country? So what I can do is select this data set and say insert and go to pivot table. First, let's look at, let's look at the description. It says easily arrange and summarize complex data in a pivot table, right? So now let's select this data and say pivot table. And now the range, as you can see, is selected by this dotted moving line. All right, so let's see. You see there are four options here, filters, columns, rows, and values. As a simple example, I want to say, I want opposition in all the rows. So you see all the row labels contain all the unique countries that Sachin Tendulkar has played against in ODIs. And as a summation of values, I want to know how many runs he scored and I have the option here, it says sum of runs. And so now this gives me the total number of runs scored by Sachin Tendulkar against each specific opposition, right? If I right click on this column and say summarize values by, I can summarize the same co column of runs scored using different metrics. I can also know what his average is against different countries. I can know what the maximum number, what his maximum score is against each country. Looks pretty impressive. I can also see the minimum score against each country. So pivot table is a great way for us to slice and dice the data across different dimensions. I can also replace opposition by maybe ground. Right Now I can know, if you see my row labels contain grounds now and I can know exactly how many runs, in this case it's the minimum of the run scored, but I can go back and say what's the total run scored at each venue across the world. What I can then maybe do is sort this data in a descending order to know what his best venue is. Looks like he scored most of his runs at Sharjah and then Colombo and Dhaka. Another quick thing I can do is take this start date and apply it as a filter. As you can see, this did not change this data set because this filter defaults to all. But if I use date as a filter, I can then go back in here and only select specific dates. And then look at where, what, and the pivot table refreshes the data based on this date. Now, since these are individual dates, it doesn't make too much sense here. But if I had aggregated this as a year, which can be seen in case study in the course, then I can know how Sachin Tendulkar performed in specific years. Let's go back to all and look at this data set again. So that was Excel 101, a quick overview of some of the most commonly used and most powerful techniques in Excel that help analysts crunch data all over the world. I hope you've enjoyed it and makes your course easier. Thanks.